Martin, and uh, welcome to the 35th annual Colorado Convention. We're in, uh, happen to be, where are we? We're in Los Angeles, California. This is this is local time. It's also happy uh, St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I hope uh, we see a little bit of, we see some green. Yeah. One gentleman, oh, two, we got two. But anyway, we, we're, we're happy to, to have you here. My name is Mike Seastrom. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And we've got Ernie Kinney, who's from Fresno, California. And we want to welcome you to the history session, history and heritage. When I was initially asked to do this, I thought, well, there's quite a few people in our organization who go back a little farther and, and might be able to give a little bit different perspective. And what Jerry told me was they were looking for perhaps 1960 forward. And so when I talked to Ernie, Ernie said, you know, that we can do that. Because you said that. You said that. No, 1960, any any farther back, and it might be hard to remember that far back. But uh, I, I, I was intrigued a couple of years ago by the history session that Jim Mayo and uh, Martin Mallard and Gloria Roth did in North Carolina. And not only did they do a great thing on Lancers, but they, they talked about a lot of the history in that particular area. And, of course, we were at the orientation session earlier, and we realized that the Texas folk have a lot of history down in their area. And they're, it's almost like a different chapter in, in, in American square dancing down around the Texas and around that area. And we feel, at least I feel, that in California we have a very unique history all of our own. And as time transpired, I think every region of the United States and even abroad had a little piece of history that was uniquely their own. And and part of our history, a big part of our history here in the Southwest, has been the fact that we had Sets in Order or American Square Dance Society right here in Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills. And, and Bob Osgood, being a um, student of Lloyd Shaw, happened to bring his brand of calling and in, in this area, there was quite a, a, a few callers even before Bob. So I, I rounded up some booklets that I put on the front in here a little bit to point out some things that are, have been going on, not only here in, in, in this area, but also in other areas as well as um, score dancing kind of grew and changed over the years. Um, the Sets in Order American Score Dance Society, they begin their publications in 1948. The first festivals that they begin to run and weeks, weekend dance institutes were in 1951 yeah, up in Asilomar. And, of course, many of you know that's where the uh, call lab originated up in that area. So we really have some some unique history that's, that's our own on this side. And throughout this session, if anybody has something to say, I'll be glad to run out there and, and give you the microphone and, and or, or sure, That'd be great, Bear. If you want to pass the microphone around, that would be super. But at this time, before we get going too much further, I'd like to pass the microphone on to Ernie Kinney. And, and uh, uh, Ernie is a, a past chairman of Caller Lab and uh, a longtime um, member of the uh, the record producers uh, group. And I think uh, offers a unique perceptive perspective in that way too. Ernie. We just we, hang on just a second because we want to put that comment on the microphone. Okay. I'm Dick Pesfalski in New Jersey. I, it's mentioned that I have about every every copy of Sets in Order that was ever put out, and uh, anybody else that ever look at it, I'd send it to him. Oh, well, I started calling in 1960 in a rural, actually a rural area of California. I was a school teacher, and we decided we wanted to square dance, and now this is the way it started. My sister was in college at Fresno State, and she said, I want to teach you people to square dance. Okay, we'll get a group together. You know how many we taught, she taught to square dance from a LP record? That's all she knew how to do is use this record that she had had in college. We had 10 squares in the class in a rural area. So 
the way we got started was with that, and we knew the things that were on that record. I mean, we were pretty good. I mean, we had that damn record memorized. We could dance anything that those callers, that caller on that record did. And uh, this is the way it started in our area, in the Fresno area, actually. And we got a, we went to a dance one night and had a regular square dance. And this joker called things that wasn't on that record. Uh, he called square three. We'd never heard of that thing. But we all had square dance clothes. And we, when we went in the hall, we all sat down and they said, come on, dance. We said, no, we just came to watch with square dance clothes on. <laughs> the next thing we knew, somebody had me by the hand and I'm out on the floor. And uh, this guy was calling stuff we didn't know, what to, didn't know what to do. So on the way home, I said, well, maybe we better get someone, to t a caller to teach us to dance. So we did. That's the way we got started in that area. And there's, we found later that there's about 12 clubs in that area. Now there is three. So it's dwindled gradually. And I think it is going down all over the state. I'm in your area too, and and it's it's going down. But but uh, when we started in in the 60s. It was all, I think it was at its peak at that time. And the way I got started was finally, I started going with the guy who was teaching us. And back when I was a kid, my mom forced me to sing, take piano lessons. My dad caught me practicing piano one day with my baseball glove on. That stopped that. <laughs> and, but I think the first year I called, I probably got... Uh, well, I started calling for this club when our caller quit at Kentua Creek, if you ever heard of that. Started calling for them, and then um, another club wanted me to call for them, and and I said, okay. So I was calling, before I knew it, one of the callers in the area had a heart attack, and I was calling Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and each club had a different Saturday night to dance, so I was calling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and then some round dance group down in Tulare said, would you come and call for us on the first and third Friday? We'd like to have square dancing instead of just round dancing. I was a school teacher, too, <laughs> and this is the way I got into square dancing, and, and I have never regretted it. I've never regretted it, and I think square dancing in California is has been the best it was anywhere in the United States back during the 60s and 70s and and I hope hope we can get it back now, of course I know that Ernie's a little biased when he talks about square dancing the best in California but because everybody in their particular area will say that square dancing is terrific where we live and and I think every area has a unique history but a lot of us can look back uh, on the history of square dancing primarily through uh, publications and books that, that are, are out that many of us have in our libraries. There's also a terrific amount of material on websites that's available. I know that if you haven't been on the Square Dance Foundation of New England website, there's some great information right there that, that uh, not only depicts callers from that area, but, but all across the United States. There's some information written about uh, various callers, and there's also some areas you can click on and you can actually hear um, calling of those um, individuals that are recorded on there. So there's a terrific amount of material out there. Jim, you can correct me if there's other sites that, that you're aware of, but... Bring it. The Square Dance Foundation of New England has, has recently come into the digital age. Uh, Johnny Wedge has been working with us, and Patty Green is our webmaster. They have made available all kinds of wonderful things, and it's about to get better. Uh, as you said, you can click on and hear a full tip from each of 18 callers, all of them predating 1963 when Swing Through was invented. So it's an interesting set of choreography, but... Uh, also on there are 102 of the interviews that Bob Brundage has done with callers from all over everywhere. Uh, the written versions of those, the transcribed versions, are already available. You can read about the interview with any of them. 
but uh, within the next week or two, we're going to have the audio of those interviews, so you'll be able to listen to the actual interview. You'll hear Bob Osgood talking to Bob Brundage about his experiences. It took him five hours. It's really, it's, it, the website is sdfne dot org dot org. That's Square Dance Foundation of New England dot org. And it, it's just, it's, they've got an archive center. They've got the events and things that are happening. Um, a terrific library. And, uh, like I say, there's a, there's some amazing things. You, you can actually even, um, Google things like Ed Gilmore and, and come up with, uh, an interview that, that he did that was transcribed or, or a whole, um, session that he did. I think it's 49 pages that's written out, but it just, Phenomenal, phenomenal um, amount of material that's out there. Gilmore taught me to dance on that uh, recording. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, there's a phenomenal amount of material that's out there that, that's available. And, of course, a lot of us have things in our library that, that you can kind of reach back and go back to. Um, many of us have the Sets in Order American Square Dance Society albums that uh, were given by Bob and and and. and Used as promotions for his magazine. How many have copies of these? These mag. I'm sure a lot of you do. One of them that uh, that I had that that uh, I really enjoy this is is one that is the Lucky Thirteenth album, and uh, I kind of wanted to play some pieces of it because some of these callers are uh, no longer with us, and 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 some are. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is great. Um, the let me see if I can get a little get a little side A here. We've got Frank Lane, Bob Page, Earl Johnson, Arnie Cronenberger, Bob Ruff, and Ed Gilmore, and uh, on this side. And just I'll pay, play some little pieces of these as we go along. This first one should be Frank Lane. Frank won the gold card last year, I believe. Greetings, square dancers. We welcome you to an unusual experience in square dancing. Here, from many parts of the United States, Sets in Order, the official magazine of square dancing, has gathered some of the world's most renowned calling talent for your dancing pleasure. To begin things with a bang, here for the first call is Frank Lane from Lawrence, Kansas. Oh, and one caution, when Frank calls Snaparoo, you just go ahead and do a star through. You know, they're the same thing. Okay, Frank, it's all yours. Well, I bow to your partner, lady on the south. Circle to the left, and I hush my mouth. Circle to the left, go round the ring. Ring, ring, in the corner, swing, swing. That girl and put her on her right. Circle that bait and hang on tight. Circle that bait, go round, you know. Walk all around, new corner, Joe. And I come back, want to do a dope puzzle. Her with the left, and the corner with the right. Back with the left, all the way, man, and find old mother and a right on that grand, grand, old round and a left, go round. Hand over hand bound, that down in a rock and roll, and a promenade around, promenade that lady fair to get back home. And when you're there, heads go up to the middle and back. Two ladies chain, turn that girl, the same old two halves were through. Then a right on that through, the outside too, and turn them right around and swing through. Then box the net when you get through, and come on back with the right on that through. Pass right through, left out of man, and out of man, right on that grand, grand old right on that, that land. And when you meet that girl, little Jane, take her to the walk down lover's lane, you promenade around and then. When you get back home against sides, go forward up to the middle and back. Half square through, you do, and box the net with the outside. Did you notice how much more poetic it was in those days than it is now? Anybody want to talk to the story about Snaparoo? Um, Jim, you could probably tell the story probably as good as anyone else because there is a, a great story behind Snaparoo. Actually, it's one of the first accomplishments of, of Color Lab in negotiating agreement. It was in 72 or 3 uh, at one of the early meetings of the group that formed Color Lab, and uh, Frank and Marshall were chatting and... Marshall Flippo was then still using barge through, which had pretty much gone away and become trade by, uh, half square through and trade by. But uh, Marshall looked at Frank and he said, "Hey, Marshall, uh, Frank, when are you going to quit calling that snapperoo?" And uh, Frank said, "As soon as you give up barge through." Marshall said, "Deal." 
and they both stuck with it. It's a great story, but but uh, uh, kind of interesting to hear it. And, and most of you have heard that introduction by Bob Osgood before, and uh, and how he introduces those those records. This next cut is Bob Page, and Bob Page, of course, is the one of the original founding fathers of Caller Lab. Lived in the Bay Area um, with his wife Nita, and uh, anyway, this is. Here from Hayward, California, is that square dance editor of Sex and Order magazine, Bob Page. Bow to the Barker Corner song, circle up, go round the hall, circle up, look around, you go and out of middle up for the old up man. Barker's right with the red of the grand, grand right and look around, go hand over hand this promenade. Promenade when you meet your girl, take a little walk, go round, down a walk and talk and turn on that right back home with them. It's first and third, go up to the middle and come on back and then pass through. Separate, go round one and a line of four. Go forward eight and back you talk. Pass through and ends cross four. Do it out of middle up with the old of pain. Partners right with the red and a grand. Grand right and left, go round the ring. Hand over hand and meet your dateless promenade. Promenade, you'll turn on down a walk and talk and round the town right. Back home with a pretty little thing. Four ladies chain three quarters round the big old ring and then two and four, right enough to and turn the suit. Same two ladies chain across from you. Same two couples whirl away a half size. Saying one and three, dance up to the middle and come on back. You lead to the right and circle up forward around to go. Gents break, name two lines forward eight to the back you told. Then pass shoe and men cross full girls turn back to a Dixie chain on a double track. Girls go left, the men go right. And out of middle left with the old left hand. Partners right with the red of grand. Grand go right and left around that town promenade. It's little subtle differences in some of that choreography. Dixie chain, many remember Dixie chain. Also swing through to a box than that. We don't rarely do that, although we can, we can get away with it, but we don't do that too often anymore. But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, it's it's interesting. It's the comment that Ernie made about much more poetic, um, much more poetic calling back then. Although that's there's still a lot of poetic calling out there. It's uh, a, a lot more of us use the music. The, the music's a little fuller these days, and and uh, and so some use that uh, that music a little bit more. Uh, whereas the music just kind of played around in the background a little bit. So you can guess who this is. Now, let's make a visit to Abilene, Texas, to enjoy dancing to Blue Star recording artist Marshall Flippo. Join hands and you make a ring, circle to the left like everything. Circle up a little while, now reverse back in single file, single file. The lady and the lead gents run wild, stop at home, swing a little while. Swing the partner round and round. Then I'll a man left with your left hand, the partner right and right a left grand. Here's how they gone, Kate, to meet that gal in the promenade. Promenade go two by two and walk the lady back home with you. Promenade back home, you go and first and third. You lead to the right, circle four out third, and I'd make a line of four. Go forward four and back, you reel. Now pass through and wheel and deal. Do a double pass through, now face your partner back away. Go forward, come back. Now pass through and wheel and deal with the girls in front. Double pass through, now face the middle and back away. Go forward. Come back. Now pass through and a wheel and deal. Double pass through. Face this partner back away. Go forward. Come back. By the left through and turn this sue and cross trail and find the corner. Left out a man, a partner right in a right of left grand. Grand right in a left go round the track. Hook right on that pretty little maid. Take her home and promenade. Promenade go to. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cross trail through to the corner, Alaman left, and where's it? We're on the A one list right now, right? That would have been that would have been A one tip, Marshall. Um, it, it's interesting. I don't know if you feel the same way when you listen to some of this choreography. Some of you that have been calling a while realize that that some of this choreography you used to call, you just kind of f- forgot it, you know. And, and I was, was going to say, it, 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 yeah, that's there. You go. If you noticed, he didn't call the call. He called cross trail and find a corner. He didn't say cross trail through. Screwed it up. (laughs) 
There you go. There you go. Here's a here's a gentleman that uh, kind of ran a little bit of the McGregor Record Company that that put out so many records in the '60s, early '60s, as well as the later '60s. <laughs> Here to call for you from Long Beach, California, a McGregor Records recording star, Bob Van Antwerp. Bow to your partners in the corners on the gun to circle to the left, go round the hall, you circle left around that ring and left down the man and then grab right and left you go. Grab right and left and then meet a little girl and box them at. Well, pull by. Now then left for the old left hand and take out again, promenade, you promenade them out that ring and promenade back home. Again, the right back room with the fertile in the maiden. Oh, ladies, you can chain across that ring. And first and third, walk up to the middle and the back with you. But I want to left you, but turn your girl and sing to you. Cross trail, round one and into the middle. No sado, make an ocean wave. You balance up in the back with you and box them out and look at my eye. I right or left you, but turn. You know, one of the things about Bob's style of calling is that he sang. He was very melodious, even in his pattern music. And his and that particular thing, he spread around to a lot of different callers. Um, still today, there's a lot of callers that will stay on one or two notes on their pattern music. But Bob sang it, and he recorded on the flip side of many of the um, pattern calls that were released by McGregor. And, and he would do a boogie beat, and he would sing the whole boogie beat up and down there. And he passed that along. A lot of callers, I believe, around that time in the early 60s, Began using singing calls for pattern records as a result of some of Bob's style of calling. Lead up to the right and circle the four and I make a little line. Dance up to the middle and the back in time and pass to now wheel and deal. Everybody, you turn back, centers in, cast off three quarters round. Go forward, up and back with you and pass to and a wheel and deal. Everybody turn back, centers in and cast off three quarters round. Go forward, up and it was a great style. We did, we we really had had and have some terrific had some terrific callers back then. Right? Here we got one. Let's see. So let me put this one on here. This is a little bit later time in our history, but one, two, three. Flight. Let's head for New England and the calling of Hall of Famer and Caller Lab's first international chairman, Jim Mayo. Walk all around your corner, lady. Come back and see small with the partners, one and all. Do an alibi, an alibi, smile, and right to the partner. So much what many of us on, at least on this side of the coast, felt is that, that many of the callers on the 
on the east side really really had impeccable timing and, and of course we figured that they were all involved with contras and everything else but that wasn't the case they just that there was a little bit more emphasis i think and and uh, and you can look back at some of these recordings and really realize that there was an impeccable sense of timing and and, and more attention to the music um because even though there was a little bit less of it there was definitely more attention to the music With today's dancer, Marshall Fuppo from, uh, from, from Tucson, and uh, my wife's elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you could call that. Uh, with today's dancer, uh, those I do and make a right-hand star. Uh, the way, uh, you know, they do a lot of swinging style, those I do. Yeah, that, that Highland fling style or waist around do do Yeah, right. But I think you, you, you could talk to them ahead of time. Oh, and, yeah. And tell them, you know, you, you get your arm around that dose of dough, you're going to be in trouble. So listen up, give me a back-to-back, and here we go. You know, yeah. It's amazing, too, sometimes you call to today's dancers and how many of them can't successfully do thars, thar stars, whether it's a regular thar or a wrong way thar. Now, it, now, it seems that there's a decrease in the amount that that's called. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But I I, I find that... Uh, uh, the dancers enjoy it. It's a it's a great break in the in the uh, patterns and and still a, a terrific um, part of our program. So here's another caller that uh, that did a tremendous amount of work for Caller Lab and in, in, uh, in writing and in teaching other callers. He he had a terrific note service on this side of the the coast. Choreo, choreo breakdown is what it was called. Um, when he retired from calling, many of us didn't realize that, that he was also a, a pretty good stage actor, and he took on uh, acting on stage. And, and uh, so, welcome back to our recorded festival, and here to continue the dance action on this plus program from San Jose, California, Bill Peters. Partner corner two, head two, square through sides. Make a U turn straight back, and everybody do a clover leap and look for your own partner. Do the right and left, grand, grand, oh, right and left to go round the ring. When you meet that pretty little girl, you promenade to go round the world. And when you get back home, side two, square through, four hands around, and when you're there, do a curly cue. Follow your neighbor and spread. Now the girls trade. Recycle their beard to the left. Now the girls hint. Do a diamond circulate one time and flip your diamond. Girls trade again and swing through. Go two by two and the boys run. Do a Ferris wheel in the center. Swing through. Go two by two and spin your top. Right here, explode this wave. Left down a man. Come on back and promenade that ring. Take a lady back home again. Get along home. The date of that was 1983. Jim? Uh, we discovered at the board meeting the other night that a lot of board members didn't realize that a an autobiography that Bill wrote is available online. Uh, he wrote a, a very interesting book. He was a skillful writer, and he wrote an autobiography of his own life that is very entertaining to read. Uh, we, With a little help from Bill Hyman and uh, some other people, uh, we managed to get that thing online, and if you go to dosado.com, you can uh, click on the Bill Peters biogra- autobiography and, and read the book. It's a very interesting book. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a nice piece of information. I was just going to say that that little opening figure there is on a, on a CD I have that Mike Seastrom called it, A Dance in Colorado. You bet. You bet. I, you know, he was an he was a, a, a interesting gentleman and had some great choreography and uh, and whether I was calling with him or, or just had a chance to uh, to uh, listen to him on a, on, a, on a piece of music like this, it was very easy to, to say, God, that's a sweet little piece of choreography. And, and uh, he, w- he was really a, a, a pretty amazing guy. And the, the recording itself doesn't seem as high energy as Bill was because Bill was really a high energy sort of guy. But uh, it just... just uh, he, his contributions to Caller Lab still live on. He did a lot of writing, as, as Jim was saying. There was a tremendous amount of writing that he was involved with. Let's see if we can get a third cut here. And now for Ernie Kinney. Mm-hmm. 
Do it all then left for the corner, all eight spin the top. Spin it again. Turn partner right. Left out of my in the corner, girl and promenade, go around the world. Now don't stop, don't slow down, one and three. Wheel around, now pass through, do you turn back and load the boat? Do a right and left grand around that ring, grand, do a right and left you go, grand, right and left go around the room. We'll play that again, you got to copy, everybody copy that down. You probably back home, you and I get back home in one and three, square two, and I get me four hands around, you go, swing to the outside two, boys run, girls trade, crossfire. If anybody needs that choreography. <laughs> It means that choreography is written down on the back of the uh, of the album cover here, so we can. That's right. It's it's. Uh, in later years, he was writing. Bob was taking that, transcribing that choreography, and put it on the back of that uh, that recording. Also, Ernie, you want to say anything? No. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you guys want to listen to a couple more pieces? Uh, we've got. Uh, oh, here's an interesting one. This gentleman has his 50 year of calling this year. Sets in order. Welcome to our special documentary in sound, putting the spotlight on the plus movements of square dancing. This is your MC, Bob Osgood, and during the next 30 minutes or so, it'll be my pleasure to introduce you to eight fine callers coming from many parts of the United States. Here to start things off from Houston, Texas, Wade Driver. Leap out of the partner and a corner to circle of the left, go walking around a go up. Do an element left that corner, all each you spin the top, I go half on the right, the girl star left. Boys will run around that partner, I'm on eight, but you don't slow down, I keep on moving it around, and then the heads wheel around and a right left through. I'm gonna turn that lady, everybody load your boat, I go walking around a ring. When I meet that partner, I just box the mat, hang on and do the right, a left grand, grand right and a left around. I'm gonna go when I get back home, swinger should be there. The wheel now, head zip to the middle and back. You square up through and I get four hands to go down. With a corner, lady, touch a quarter, gonna follow your neighbor and spread. Spin chain the gears a half by the right boy three and the girl turn around the center boy trade star by the left hand three quarters. Here's another caller that uh, as we introduced this morning. Let's see if I can get that. Oh come on! As long as we're in Texas, let's fly on up to Fort Worth, where our next caller has his own hall and calls for a wonderfully friendly group of dancers. It's our pleasure to introduce Melton Luttrell. Well, I'm your partner In the corner, too Well, circle to the left, do round You do, and circle to the left, go round The ring with the prittle to the lady Left out, man, forward, two With the right and the left, and swing with the left Make an alabandar, and the boy back up From where you are Remake the bar, go forward, right from the next with the left, three quarter round the girl, back up in an alabama bar. Remake the bar, go forward, right from the next with the left, three quarter round the boy, back up in an alabama bar. Slip the clutch, skip one girl and left down a man, the partner right and a right a left grand. Grand, oh, right and a left go round to meet your honey and promenade to go walk and talk in the pretty little maid, and when you're there, head to. Walk up to the middle and back, square two, and I get me four hands around in the middle of the track. Go side, go get all the way around, and then spin, chain the gears, half with the right, three quarter with the left. Of course, this CD or album is plus, so we're missing. Uh, I think we were missing remake the Thar right now, but uh, that went up on the A two list. But 
I danced to him before I ever uh, started calling uh, Milton. So it's God's truth. It is the truth. Yeah, it yeah, is a couple it, of years before I ever started to uh, call. And uh, he had a band over there in uh, Cisco, or, I mean Eastland, and uh, really a good band. And so we'd go over there every second and fourth Tuesday night and dance. And uh, But anyway, he's an old, old guy. You know, another gentleman that, that was in this area that, that was very prolific when it came to writing and had a note service that uh, um, went on and on and on uh, it was called The New View. Well, The New View was part of his note service, I believe it was. But uh, but Bill Davis, who, of course, is uh, was a longtime member and, uh, um, unfortunately, his career in, in calling was cut short by a stroke. But uh, he came out with the site caller's textbook and uh, of course he had his new view which I think began in like 1983 where he would write down the score dance basics and of course any of the new stuff that came out but even before this um, if you if you got his note service you realized how many calls were released every month and and uh, and he had perhaps anywhere from 10 to to 40 new calls a month in his note service uh, there was a comment once made that that uh, that the callers and and even dancers who wrote calls um, wrote them because they loved to see their name in print. And perhaps if we didn't put their names on the calls, maybe people would stop writing calls. But <laughs> that didn't work. No, that didn't work. But uh, but Bill was was very prolific with his notes. And if anybody had a new call or a new idea, they sent it to Bill, and Bill would analyze it. And then sometimes if it had already been written or maybe had a different name, Bill knew it. And either by his his own notes or by the work he did with Bill Burleson, and Bill Burleson was another one that uh, that uh, had a wrote a tremendous start out with a little tiny dictionary and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger and and it's huge nowadays and I think it's the property of American Square Dance Magazine right now uh, still still updates his his stuff and his information another person that. Uh, that I think was very instrumental at the same time because he was very good about writing about uh, calling and stuff was Jay King and of course Jay was up from the New England area and uh, but um, in my conversation with Jim I, I, I he evidently he wrote children's books while he was going to school or put himself through, put himself through call college by writing children's books but he was very prolific with score dance material and. Uh, and I initially came up with the idea of burnt image choreography, uh, which, which was his term, I believe. And uh, Don Beck later on kind of moved it, moved it up a notch, as I understand it. Dick? Uh, Jay King used to put out a, a series of, you remember, you probably got those uh, lessons on how to use that uh, material, that he, his, his system. Yeah, it was it was a very fascinating system, and, and at that time there were a lot of different systems in the early '60s that were being developed. When I started to call in 1963, there was primarily reading and and memorization, and there was a lot of callers that read, and there was a lot of callers that memorized their stuff, and of course most of the stuff that came out on American Square Dance, uh, sets in order American Square Dance Society came out in these yearbooks and, and, and much of it was a piece of choreography that was written from, you know, the squared set to an Alaman left and it all had a name, you know. Um, you know, there might be something like Surf or this one was Tennessee Rebel or, or Switch Hitter or, you know, all these different names for, for a particular sequence of, of choreography. And, uh, and I had begun to talk a little bit with, with Jim about a, a particular small book that kind of changed my calling a lot, but it was called Modular Choreography. And this was written by John Strong, who used to be the editor of American Score Dance Magazine in Salinas. And uh, he wrote uh, about modules, and for me, it, it really turned calling around a little bit. All of a sudden, I realized that, that there you can there's a whole different way of, of organizing your choreography. So for many of us, it just memorized our, our, our material. It was before we had modules. That's right. Before we had modules. His, his introduction starts out says today's and, and my recollection of this book was in the 60s and yet it, they're looking through this book today uh, there is Ferris wheel written in here and I had a conversation with Don Beck who wrote Ferris wheel and he said he wrote that in 1974 75 it, there is no date on the book and I had looked this thing from cover to cover to see if I could find a date and and it is 
it, it, I believe it's the first printing of it, but it says today's square dance choreography has become complex when compared to the dances of 10 or 20 years ago. The need for a system to simplify the arrangement of our patterns and the introduction of new material into our program has been constantly growing. This booklet is not in itself that new system, but rather an ex- to explain what many callers have been doing for some time to maximize the material that they can introduce, minimize the time they need to accomplish this, and eliminate much of the personal confusion as possible. So he talked about the module and the unit of choreography and and so a very very small book but a but but very very uh, just kind of clicked the light on for me and i'm sure many others dick um back in the 50s they used to uh, write complete dances the pattern uh uh uh, was more than a module was complete and they all had names and one day one guy thought it would they were just they couldn't think of any more names, so he called it his his dance run out run out of names, <laughs> and uh, that's what we used to use. We memorize. It was just like a singing call. You'd call a thing and get the corner and promenade, and you'd change partners, and then you'd do a singing call. Rayleigh's romp. There, there was yeah, exactly. Just named after either a caller or named after a, a particular location or, or whatever. And, and there was a lot of little publications in, from various areas, along with the the basics, um, the experimental basics. And this is even 1970. Will Orlick was another gentleman who was a was a, a dancer primarily, but uh, published a lot of material and and, and note services and and for a long time. Uh, was was very prolific with with his writing. So a lot of us have notes even that go back with Will Orlick. You probably have Will Orlick, don't you? Exactly. Um, these books, I, 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 and these were books that were written uh, by Jim Mayo on timing, on your voice, uh, leadership, smoothness. Uh, these were booklets that were were very very informative. And in, in, uh, and although I believe this was what 1970 maybe. Yeah, I, I, the first one. Was- the, the first one I wrote was because of Colab Convention. Uh, uh, we, at the convention, the Ron Schneider had been asked to do a presentation on smoothness. And he started his presentation by saying he'd done all the research he could and could not find a single thing written about smoothness for callers. Willard Orlick had written about how dancers could make the dancing smooth, but nobody had written anything at all about how callers should be involved in the smoothness process. And then he made his presentation, and I got sent home to write something to find out more about what callers' part in the smoothness issue was. We did a a full day, a full Sunday afternoon and evening experiment session with dancers and callers in New England, and out of that came the smoothness book, which was the first of that series of four. Yeah, a, a terrific series, but but first, but we're, we're, we started to see finally things actually written down in print, and of course, most of us got a, a sets in order. That was seventy six or seventy seven, and we still were just learning about the, the callers had a part to play and whether dancing was smooth. That's, yeah, that's astounding to think it was that recent. That it was that recent. You're absolutely right. Uh, how many own the callers text? This is this is a, a phenomenal resource and, and just just great reading. It's great to have in your library, but if you're looking for particular subjects, you can go to there and and, and there's tremendous uh, the contributors to to all the articles in there throughout. Bob w- did a great job of uh, Bob Osgood put, did a great job of putting that together for uh, for kind of a caller's library, and, and I think it's a terrific resource. So, Ernie. He stated something from from that little article there that uh, about smoothness. I used to tell uh, callers, the women are dancing too, you know. <laughs> you up there calling that square dance. You don't mind calling star through and veer to the left. So I told Edie Darty, I said, from now on, when you call star through and veer, say veer to the right, see where the men go. <laughs> so. So we have to think about smoothness ourselves. It's not not a fact that it's about the dancers. It's about what we what we call, and so I try to remember that uh, my wife's out there dancing sometime, and she might tell me something when I get home that I want to hear. 
It's really true. It's really true. You know, one of the callers that, that, that really astounded me in the early years was a gentleman who played the accordion and, and, uh, and, and called and, or whatever that squeeze thing that he had. And, and, but he was also just a very entertaining man and uh, a bit of a character. Of course, we're all characters in our own right, but, but he was a bit of a character. And, uh, but I remember w- watching this guy just kind of astounded. It's been a great pleasure for all of us to add to your square dancing fun in this way. And we look forward to each coming month when, through the pages of Sets in Order, we'll be able to visit your home again. And here to put the finishing touches on our Sets in Order jamboree, coming from Dallas, Texas, the voice of J. Bar L. Records, Joe Lewis. It's first and third, up to the middle and come on back. And then you cross trail through, outside around, just one for you. Come on in and box the nap, two girls join hands, rock an ocean way. Go up and back, right and left through and turn her, then you pass through and split the outside too. Make a line of four and move it up to the middle and come on back. The opposite lady, box the nap, everybody make an ocean wave like that and rock it up and back. Go right and left through, turn your girl and roll away to a right and left grand. It's a right and left around the land. It's right and left till you meet her. No side, no. Nobody's sweeter and pass her by. Swing the next little girl. Tell you why you're gonna promenade her home. When you're back at home, it's first and third up to the middle and back again. And then you half square through. Split the outside two. Come around into the middle and half square through. Now start through. Frontier twirl. And on Start through, do a right and left through this two, and half square through, on to the next two, and cross trail through to a left out of land, and here we go in a right and left grand, it's a right, left, right, left, you meet your honey promenader, you take her home, take her back to your hometown, and two and four, move up to the middle and come on back, and cross trail through, go round one, come on in, you box the nap. Two girls join hands like an ocean wave like that. And a right and left through. Turn her pass through. You split the outside too. Make a line of four. Move up and back once more. Opposite box the net. Make an ocean wave just like that. Right and left through and roll away to a right and left grand that's a coming your way. Right and left around that town. And when you meet that pretty little girl, do side do around. And look her in the eye. Swing the next little lady and promenade this lady. Promenade around the ring. Take her home and when you're home. The time all we could, there was a time all we could do from an ocean wave was to rock it up and back and do a right and left through. <laughs> and, and, yeah, oh, he was phenomenal with, yeah, he, he really did. It's in Frontier World. Ernie Ernie made the comment about Frontier World. Well, he was from Texas. He's not going to call California twirl. I'm sure. <laughs> He's not going to call. The other story about Joe Lewis that 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 I heard, and I don't know even where I heard it. Although I, I believe it was down in Australia. When you're down in, with the Aussies, of course they dance with that ha- arms up, Alaman left, or that pigeon wing arms, Alaman left. And the story that I heard is that when Joe Lewis went down there, he went down there and kind of spread score dancing around Australia a bit. And he did that kind of as a joke, just thought that uh, that would be kind of fun to, to teach him something a little bit different down there. And and, uh, and they have stuck with it ever since that time. Now, I, I can't confirm that story, but uh, they still proudly in, in Australia dance with arms up, a man left. And that's their style, and that's their trademark, so as to speak. And I believe it was Joe Lewis that brought it down there just as, as a hoot. Marshall? I was a, a guest of Joe and Claire's, and uh, uh, I was calling in uh, Sherman, Texas that night. So they said, come on over and stay with us, and then you go up there and come back. So I was uh, about to go to, to the shower, and I said, now, y'all, uh, will you still be up when I get back? I said, well, when you get back, I said, we're going with you. Well, you know, it was one of my... Idols, and so that's a little nervous. He said, "We got to go to the airport first And uh, and I said, "Who, who, who's coming in?" He said, "Ed Gilmore," and, he, and said, "I think he's going too." I'll never forget that night. <laughs> got a slight test for you, not, not you, Jim. 
Uh, Dave did, Clare from Nottingham, England. I'm talking. <laughs> when did we lose box the net? Don't think we've lost box the net. <laughs> well, we still use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned the two styles, the, the upright Allemand. That was the cause of great controversy in England because the south of England went to the Southern California style, the forearm Allemand, and we were dancing the Texas style. And it caused a tremendous rift north and south in England for years. It took a long time before the two associations got back together. When was this taking place, Dave? Oh, back in the early 60s. So it was in the early 60s that this was this was an issue? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That arms up Alamand, did you know the origination? Who brought that into that part of England, or was it? That's how we started. Everybody started the same way. But then they went for the Southern California style in the south, and they were the association, and they said, well, this is going to be the style for the rest of the country. We said, the hell it is. So we, we carried on. <laughs> but they were the South, so we didn't like them anyway. That's right. That's right. There was that. We, we have still had that same issue in Collar Lab. There will be some areas that will never change. And I think it took Collar Lab a long time to realize that there are some things we are just not going to change. And, and was it, was it, yeah, New England, Jim Mayo just made the comment, New England was the holdup. Dick? Right. Uh, I was in New England at the time it changed. But, um, Les Gocher did a, 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 sort, a, a workshop with him one time. He told me, well, first of all, he was Clark Gable's um, stand-in for a while. And he said that he was in another movie and they had a square dance. And they had guys coming across. When they, they did grand right and left, they had their hands up too. And not only the pigeon wing. Uh, and he said... Whoever was the director, he said, we can't have that going across the screen like that, so we got to put your hands down. So every place in the country but New England. Of course, Texas, I think, never did do it any other way. Did they, Flippo? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, well, those are those I'm talking about are uh, walk around your corner with them. Uh, okay. Uh, we'd go as far as 50 miles east of us in San Francisco, and... Uh, when we walked around a corner, like you call it today, and seesaw your tongue, well, we always went like we do it today. But go 50 miles east, you walk around in front of your corner and then come back this way, right shoulder to your partner. So it's, uh, it's, it's changed down. It's the same, same thing down there. Yeah, the, the areas of regional differences just within the same state. It's it's pretty astounding. Pretty astounding. Um, anybody else? I have a little piece here that was – our convention started with a piece from a cartoon, Bugs Bunny cartoon. And, of course, the gentleman that was primarily responsible for Bugs Bunny cartoons was Chuck Jones. And Chuck – was a square dancer that was very, very involved in Bob Osgood's club and wrote quite a bit in the American Square Dance magazine and as well as doing covers for, I mean, Sets in Order um, magazine. He also wrote articles in that magazine, and this was one that I picked up. It was in July of 1953 that this occurred, in, or this was published in the magazine, and it's called The Caller, as viewed by Chuck Bugs Bunny Jones. And it starts out, everyone who square dances has decided opinions about callers in particular and most of them about callers in general. Some of these opinions are constructive. As a starter, let's examine the idea that callers are a class among people somewhat as Airedales are a class amongst dogs. Uh, Sinclair Lewis once said, there are no tramps, only men tramping. We might recognize that there are no callers either, only men and women calling. Now, if we understand this, and it is a toughie to accept, we have to make, make we, we have made an important step in our understanding of the care and treatment of callers. A caller is a human being, incredible as it may seem. The very nature of the job of score dance calling automatically sentences a man to a curious, half-lit world where there, he is somewhere between a club member, a platoon sergeant, a paid entertainer, a father confessor, a buffoon, and a concert master. 
When he first grasps a microphone and his sweaty little paw trembles out his first Solomon Levi, he not only removes himself from the realm of the dancer, but he becomes a performer for pay. This is a fact of life. We dancers may forget this, but the caller cannot, if he wishes to become popular and remain so. Realizing this, the caller is a person subject to melancholia and hives and housemaid's knee and psychosis, hunger and thirst. How best can we help him create a successful dance for use? And then it's clubs usually place a caller in one of the following categories. And he goes ahead and describes the deity, the object of suspicion. Uh, let's see what else he has in here. Anyway, it's, 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 it's a cute little article. I have it up in here if anybody wants to read it in its entirety. But I just, I find it fascinating sometimes when you read what is written about callers, even back in 1953. And, uh, that idea, I think, is, is, is cute in itself. These issues, if you have not had a chance to go back and, and look through Sets in Order magazine, uh, there, I think in the future may even be Sets in Order magazine possibly on the New England or available down the line, but the, right now I don't think any of it's available electronically, but, uh, but uh, that's a possibility also down the line that much of our library will be accessible through the Internet and, and, uh, and some of this material we'll be able to pick up through the Internet. Uh, it's fun because every once in a while a, a caller goes to the, the trouble of typing something up or finding a, a, something written down someplace and, and, and putting it back in, in a magazine somewhere. Right now I think Cappy Kappenman does a lot of that with American Score Dance magazine. He'll write uh, uh, or, or publish another piece or send in another piece that was written by by Bruce Johnson or by Arnie Cronenberger or somebody else. And, and some of these articles then appear even in the caller's text, but again, they're, they're, they're great articles, and many of them apply to today as, as well as, uh, as even back then. So, Ernie, you want to make any closing comments? or I might tell about how I met a guy, but I won't. I was at calling at Cantua Creek. 45 miles southwest of Fresno back in the early 60s. And I heard that this guy was coming out from Texas to call square dancing. And uh, I said, let's get him. They said, okay, what do you think? I said, he wants $125. They said, what? I said, he wants $125. Of course, we charged a dollar and a half a couple then to get into square dances. <laughs> And uh, I finally had to say, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If we don't make enough money to pay him, I'll pay him the difference. That's the worst mistake I probably ever, <laughs> ever made in my life. <laughs> we had 35 squares that night. <laughs> but I'd like for that tape to be turned off and tell how I actually met him. Could you turn the tape off down there, down below there or something? We gotta have the mic. I gotta have the microphone. As soon as we go off, I'll tell how I met him. Actually, and the caller you're talking about is Marshall Flippo, I believe. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank all of you for attending today and and for sharing with us and being part of this history and heritage session. If uh, you enjoyed the session or would like to see future sessions or even a session that has a little bit different slant. Um, I've already filled out my note as the moderator, and uh, I would I would encourage you to do so uh, if you would like these sessions to continue. I'm Mark? sorry I'm on this thing again, but was uh, before I got here was the uh, Linda Osgood subject uh, addressed or anything, or uh, have you know anything about it? Or uh, we didn't bring up we didn't bring up that subject here. I believe there is okay. a presentation that's going to be made to the Board of Governors um, oh, regarding okay, okay. Mirabili from from Bob Osgood. Um, after this convention and as part of that convention. So uh, it is being addressed. I'd like to finish up our session just uh, or finish playing uh, a, a final piece from the session and uh, by a caller who was uh, quite popular in this area and uh, traveled around the world or, and around the country in the calling. And so. Here from Yucaipa, California, 
In our jamboree of outstanding callers is Ed Gilmore. Now, department, your corner's all left, Alaman. Walk right into your right and left grand. Ever Thank you guys for coming. Ever other hand, right and left, till you meet a little maid. Then you doze it all back to back. Turn to the corner, Alaman, left, and you come back one. Promenade with your partner now. Take a little walk and one and three. Don't leave yet. Go forward up to the middle of the set and come on back. Star through, go right and left through, just you do, and turn around and pass through. Do, sa, do, go back to back, make an ocean wave, and then you rock hey, it. Hey, hey. Right and left through, and turn the girl, and then you dive through, square through, three quarters round. Left aisle a man, I walk right in, to right and left, 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 right Promenade them two with two. Walk a lady home with you. Now two and four. Forward up to the middle and back.